cold, dark, and heavy with ancient mud, the kind that remembers empires. But you, little creature, you've been floating in this same sunken world for millennia, long before the Spanish swords carved through the jungles, long before the lake dried, long before the scientists in white coats lined up to study you like a living ghost. You are an axolotl, and you're not supposed to be here, yet you are. You live in the bottom of what used to be Lake Xochimilco, a shattered shard of the once mighty Aztec lake system. Today it's half-drowned farmland, canal graffiti, and motorboat oil. But once this was your kingdom, back then, the Aztecs believed you were a god. Or at least, a god who didn't want to be found. They said you were the trickster twin of Quetzalcoatl. That when the gods demanded sacrifice, you chose transformation instead. Rather than climb the pyramid and bleed, you slipped into the lake, grew gills, lost your lungs, and vanished beneath the reeds. And ever since then, you stayed hidden. You're a paradox with a smile. Not metaphorically, you actually look like you're smiling. A fixed, innocent grin stretches across your face, as if you know something the rest of the animal kingdom doesn't. You're technically a salamander, but unlike your terrestrial cousins, you refuse to grow up. While other salamanders sprouted legs, climbed out of the water, and started their midlife crisis on land, you stayed in your larval state. Forever aquatic, forever youthful. Scientists call this neotini. The decision to become sexually mature while still looking like a child. It's like hitting puberty and saying, yeah, I'll take the ability to reproduce, but I'd rather not deal with adult life. Thanks, no thanks. It's strange. It's rare. And in your case, it's survival. Imagine this. You're drifting through the water. Your frilly external gills sway like cherry blossoms in a quiet current. Your limbs are stubby, but capable. You aren't fast. You don't need to be. Everything here, the mud, the fish, the old Aztec ruins rotting beneath you all move slow. You are not a predator. You're an opportunist. Worm. Swallow it. Bug. Slurp. Fellow axolotl. Well, if you're starving, let's just say you're not above auto-cannibalism. And that missing limb you just lost in the struggle, it'll grow back in a few weeks. Nerves, bones, skin, good as new. You're not a miracle. You just built differently. That regeneration trick, it's not a party trick. It's a survival strategy. You can lose a leg, an eye, even part of your heart, and then rebuild it. Not scarred, not weaker, but restored, cell by cell, as if it never happened. No mammal can do that. Not like you. So, of course the humans came. Not with nets and spears, but with notebooks and microscopes. They harvested your cells. They mapped your genome. They called you a key to human limb regeneration. And they bred you. In labs. In tanks. Under sterile lighting. You became a scientific darling. A floating fountain of biological secrets. And a captive curiosity. Here's the irony. You're thriving in captivity. While your wild cousins, the originals, are nearly almost gone. In the canals of Xochimilco, your home is choked by pollution, invasive tilapia, and disappearing wetlands. Your numbers have dropped so low that some years, field biologists couldn't find a single wild axolotl at all. They were beginning to wonder, had you disappeared back into myth? But back in the tanks, you're multiplying. Thousands of you live in classrooms, zoos, and pet stores around the world. You wear pastel colors now, leucistic pink, albino gold, sometimes even black speckled white like marble statues with gills. You're adorable, marketable. Instagram calls you the smiling lizard. Children name you Bubbles. Scientists name you Subject A7. Both believe you'll live forever. But what they don't see is that you're lonely in your perfection. In the wild, you are a symbol of transformation. In the tank, you're frozen in time. No predators. No storms, just pellets, pipettes, and the hum of filtration systems. You've outsmarted extinction, but a cost. Somewhere in the canals of southern Mexico, one of you might still be there. A true wild axolotl, hiding in the shadows of a sunken shrine, waiting for dusk. Still connected to the myth. Still smiling. Still swimming. Still reminding us. Survival isn't always about conquest. Sometimes it's about adaptation. Or refusal. You could have grown up. You chose to stay soft. And somehow, that was enough.